Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 12th, 2023. Let's get into it. So the first shocking thing <laughs> that came out of my video for today was Ursula von der Leyen, I guess that's how you pronounce it. She put out a tweet saying, destroying civil infrastructure, turning off electricity, water, and heating is pure terrorist behavior. Indiscriminate bombing of entire residential blocks of buildings is something we will condemn and bring the culprits to international court because it is against every law of the European norms. She talking about Israel? <laughs> I mean, because that's exactly what they're doing, and I, and so I had to I had to follow up on that one. I said, I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would agree with Ursula von der Leyen on anything. However, she is correct that the bombing of Gaza, Palestinian civilians, is a war crime. Uh, corrupt Biden, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, gosh, how do you pronounce that? Needs to face an international uh, tribunal. See my video on X. So I did put out a video about uh, Palestine, uh, Israel being bombed, but that's not what this video is going to be about. We're going to get back to uh, two important things. I will want to point out here at the beginning of the video, uh, we do have an international day of terror that may take place tomorrow. Uh, that's what Hamas has called for. We have uh, 8 million illegal immigrants here in the United States, many of them young men of fighting age. Uh, we may see terror on the streets of the United States. Uh, thanks to the Democrats. Thanks to the Democrats who want open borders. That's what Democrats want. They want the destruction of the United States for sure. Why else would you have open borders with young men crossing? It's an invasion that's taking place, and uh, Democrats are all for it. Anyway, don't get me on my box. So we'll see what happens with that. But I, the first thing that I, the other thing I wanted to get into before we, we get to Ukraine was uh, there was a great video that came out that Brazil and China have just conducted uh, some huge transactions in their native currencies. So, so we can see that the de-dollarization of the world, so they're, they're no longer using dollars for some of their transactions. I'm not sure if that includes all. Uh, so we, and it, it takes a lot of, I mean, these things don't happen overnight. You know, there's a lot of infrastructure that you have to put in place before you can stop using dollars because the dollar was the standard until we weaponized it against the world. You know, sanctions on Venezuela, sanctions on Russia, sanctions on Syria, sanctions on Libya. I mean, we'll sanction everybody, but to force everybody not to use the dollar. It's almost like the Democrats don't want people using dollars. And so, anyway, let's watch that video completed their first bilateral trade using local currency. The move joins a host of other countries moving away from the US dollar in a shift of the global economic balance. According to the Bank of China, the transaction marks a milestone in trade relations between Beijing and Brasilia after a deal was reached in April. The new process of using the Chinese yuan in exchange for the Brazilian real is set to open doors for companies to expand business. Well, we spoke to a pair of guests on the matter who suggest that other nations will continue to move away from the current global reserve currency. This is very promising and it's part of a trend that will, that will continue. The global trading system, um, I think, has to become more independent of uh, U.S. policy. Which, which increasingly the U.S. dollar has become a kind of a, an instrument of, of that policy. The role of the U.S. dollar will continue to, to um, decline. Dollar dominance is uh, more and more clearly uh, an instrument of uh, neo-colonial uh, exploitation. Its role as a reserve currency is also going to decline. China has already agreements with almost 30 countries to do trade and investments without using the dollar. So I think this is one more chapter in, in this, uh, uh, the new trend of creating alternatives to the use of dollar, which we know is one of the biggest uh, weapons that United States has to keep their domination around the world. China has an advantage because China is now the, the most important trading partner of the majority of the countries in the world, more than 120, 130 countries. And regarding specifically Brazil, there's a huge potential for uh, for growing uh, trade in, in renminbis and reais. Probably in the next months and a and, and couple of years, we're going to see in other countries in South America doing the same kind of agreement with, uh, with China. 
All right, so wasn't that interesting that uh, that they were able to conduct those transactions? But let's let's get into the Ukraine video. Before I bring it up, I wanted to uh, go back in my history. You know, back in the 80s, uh, I was out in the Mojave Desert and we were training to fight the Russians, uh, assuming that they had invaded uh, Europe or even uh, North America. We're out in the Mojave Desert. And I remember this one day was the, getting near the end of the exercise because these were live fire exercises and we fired off, you know, I mean, it, these were division level exercises and just, just people got killed, you know, out there in, in the training. Uh, a lot of Americans don't know how many Americans die in this type of live fire training. And I remember we were laying up on top. We, we, we had put in all of the uh, napalm across this valley and supposedly the Russians uh, were advancing on our position and I guess I have a vivid imagination because I could I could almost feel like I was seeing the tanks coming across the desert you know coming towards us and uh, and then of course the artillery you know everything opens up it's called the final defensive fire you you're being oh we were supposedly being overrun the tanks were firing down range the artillery <laughs> because they were firing over top of us from behind and so those those shells were going over top of our heads and then of course you know supposedly the russians came into the valley and then we set that napalm off and if you could picture the entire valley was just one huge massive fireball i'd never seen anything like it in my lifetime it looked like a nuclear explosion had gone off in the valley and then of course what was left of the russians we opened up with the m60 machine guns and we're fired we got the m16s and we're firing that range that's what i remember that's what i saw in my imagination and of course we did it you know uh it, luckily there was only tires that we were fighting not real russians but i want you to picture ukraine now ukraine so here we are, the, the, the Russians are advancing, and this is for real, they're advancing on all fronts now. They've got, the, they've got the reserves well trained, they've brought up all of their hardware. So now, we're going to get to the video in just a second. I want you to picture this, you're a Ukrainian soldier, you, you're in the mud, you're in the muck, you know, it's, it's rain up to here. You, you know, you're, you're sick of fighting, you know, you've watched hundreds of your friends get killed, your, your fellow soldiers every single day for the last three months with this, this counteroffensive that just went nowhere. And now you look out and you see on the horizon, and I picture myself in that desert, and I'm watching this massive dust cloud coming at me, and I'm thinking, what the hell is that? And then as it comes into focus, I see tanks, and I see infantry, and I see artillery. And then I, it goes on. For as far as the eye can see, all I can see is just hordes of Russians and tanks and artillery. One thousand tanks coming at me as I'm watching, walking across the desert, and I'm thinking, my God, who can stand against that. Let's watch the video. Now we are moving to Avdiivka, the major and the main battle of the Russians in these, these days, those days. As you can see, there are a significant number of icons and the Russians to attack Avdiivka and Ukrainian forces in this area also use significant number of armored vehicles, tanks, armored personal carriers, armored infantry machines, uh, the mining equipment, a lot of artillery systems. And currently the Russians establish control over every single movement of the Ukrainians that uh, take place on the northern part of Avdiivka. Basically, the Russians control everything. The only question is how the Russians are going, going to use this, um, this information and these like, uh, benefits. We got a very interesting video from this direction, very interesting details. Um, uh, this video we got on the uh, 10th of October. I believe you have already seen this scene, this video. Just on this scene, just on this small photo, we can calculate one, two, three, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 armored vehicles that were already in the vicinity of Krasnogorka trying to storm Avdeevka from the north. Furthermore, there are more tanks and armored vehicles who were heading from the north. Significant number of forces and the Ukrainian sources are saying that the Russians involved up to 50 armored vehicles. So probably, uh, I think that that battle, that attack, 
was probably the first attack with such a significant number of armored vehicles from Russian side since the Second World War, since the Kursk battle or something like this. Uh, and as a result of that attack, uh, with the Russians established control, but the most important part of this video is that Ukrainians having uh, Russian forces right on the edge positions weren't using artillery. The, the Ukrainians didn't attack even as we, we don't see on this video even a single let's say uh, let's signal even a signal a, a single area with that the Ukrainians attack with artillery forces all crossed cluster rounds or something like this a lot of videos how they managed to discover the Ukrainian artillery systems on this video we see the Hovitza, um like um, German Hovitza. Uh, Panzer Hovitza 2000 and as a result of artillery strike uh, of using the Krasnopol hit that artillery system was destroyed. The second artillery system was destroyed a little bit to the south from the uh, from original area. Another artillery system was destroyed as a result of Krasnopol hit. So the Russians managed to suppress this territory without any problems. Uh, as a result of uh, Fab 500 strikes, the Russians managed to pin down and to destroy a lot of Ukrainian positions, a lot of ammo depots of 110th Brigade or 53rd Motorized Brigade and many, many other types of forces that Ukrainians have in this direction. Furthermore, the Russians started bombing and attacking the, um, the water pump station uh, on the east of DFK edge positions. As a result of Fab strikes, the Ukrainians had significant damage and probably this is another artillery preparation before the next wave of attack of the Russian forces in this direction. How the Russians as a result of offensive operation managed to get the railways. So this video, this area was captured by the Russians. They managed to land their infantry, they managed to dig in deeper in this area, they managed to bring also significant number of armored personal carriers, a lot of infantry. Furthermore, the Russians uh, to pin down the Ukrainians and not to allow them to counter-attack bombed Avdiivka heavily, the northern part, the area where they, yesterday they managed to destroy a train with the fuel and today they continue attacking the same territory because uh, the uh, coal mine and the chemical plant is the main industrial area in this city and the main area with concentration of Ukrainian forces. And of course, the Russians understand that they still haven't established a strong foothold on the Ukrainian side of the railways to create a strong foothold, first of all, they need to capture at least one city. They need to do the same as the Ukrainians did in Rabotina. They capture Rabotina and at least from this perspective, we can consider a small foothold, a small area with a roof above your head where you can dig in deeper. So the Russians need to do this because the Ukrainians continue regrouping and they continue sending more and more forces in this direction, stationed by the name of Achertina. But the Russians control the situation and as a result of missile strike, the entire railway station was destroyed. During the first day, we got the report from the Minister of Defense that as a result of the strike, the Ukrainians lost 30, the forces of 31st Mechanized Brigade lost up to 90 soldiers and something around 10 armored vehicles. And we got another video how the Russian armored fist, also significant number of tanks, personal carriers and infantry were moving along the streets of Peromaiska in direction of Nitailova. At some point, the Russian personal carrier or tank got on minefields and was destroyed, at least damaged. As was, the tank wasn't destroyed. And this is very interesting. During the previous days, we had we saw significant number of videos how the Russian tanks entered the minefields, the mines blown up, but the tank and armored vehicle survived. We saw the same story in Kupin's direction, in um, in uh, on the north of Avdiivka, in this area, clashes in this area, the Ukrainians lost up to 340 soldiers. Of course, some of the losses took place in Bakhmut direction, but the major part of the losses took place exactly in this area. Of another attempt of attack by the Russian forces trying to storm the city from the ground from the south. Uh, the one the thing that you can see on the video another significantly significantly greatest convoy of Russian armored vehicles heading to the south trying to attack the Ukraine positions. Another video was uh, with maybe dozens of armored vehicles including tanks, personal carriers, infantry machines and so on. The Russians managed to land the, their infantry and as a result of very unexpected and fast attack the Russians captured the Ukrainian trenches and the Ukrainian shelters and the bridgehead. Managed to discover the Ukrainian positions of their artillery forces that's, that uh, were attacking the Russians while the first waves of attacks and during the previous 24 hours
forced the Russians suppress significant number of hidden Ukrainian artillery positions as a result of Lancet strikes. At least two artillery systems were destroyed to the west of Novomikhailovka in the cities like Elizavetovka and Ilivka. The Russians reported that as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours in the south Donetsk direction, the Ukrainians lost 165 soldiers, two armored vehicles and three artillery systems. The number of tanks that were involved in every single operation. Thousands of tanks thousands of tanks and this is sometimes very scary because the Russians managed to increase the production of most modern weapon and sometimes I had the feeling that the Russians, every single Russian soldier have his own personal tank. That was the feeling that I got when I was making this video and when, when I was watching all these geolocations during the day. That every single Russian soldier have a personal tank maybe some soldiers have two or three tanks because i haven't seen such a big number uh, of tanks nowhere and when talking even about Robotin and Virbova, the ukrainians were defeated and they lost everything and the final phase of offensive operation the ukrainians were using just infantry without any progress and currently the russians have already launched a counter-offensive operation in Arekhov. Uh, videos of fpv drone strikes against the ukrainian supply cars supply machines everything that were moving along these roads were destroyed under the Russian fire. Uh, some positions were destroyed with artillery systems. So complete fire control. Now I see that everything is so massive from the Russian side. Tanks, massive. Missiles, massive. Drones, massive number. Artillery round, massive number. Soldiers, massive number. I don't know how long the Ukrainians are able to stand against such a pressure without any supply and support from the Western countries. Before artillery bombings and clashes, the Ukrainians lost another 50 soldiers. And the mainly the main losses the Ukrainian host has as a result of strikes using the 5500, 5500 and missile strikes. On this video we see how the Russians managed to discover in the central part of Nikopol the Ukrainian ammo depot and as a result of 5500 strike the entire ammo depot was destroyed and probably a significant number of Ukrainians who were somewhere in the east area around. And that's it for today. Military summary channel reminds all right, that's it. I just wanted to, to get that. You know, uh, Wagner, they're getting into the uh, the mix now. They're still in Africa, so uh, we haven't talked much about that. Uh, in the video, we talked about how the coal, coal mounds had been taken. That means the Russians have the high position. So that's a big city. It's going to be another Mariupol or a back, another Bakhmut uh, that's going to take place. A lot of people are going to die unless the Ukrainians surrender which I'm hearing that uh, 10,000 more Ukrainians surrendered uh, within the last couple of weeks, uh, from what I understand, uh, just reading stuff on uh, Twitter. I can't verify that. I don't know. I'm not there. All right. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna... Cut you down.